working with images can be a bit tricky, um, especially because devices change their viewport. So images could shrink, they could be stretched. And um, it's important to know how the images look like on different sizes, but also to have a smart way of cropping them. So let's look at the hero image we have on the right here. It's uh, this one. What I can do is, as you can see, this image gets cropped on certain um, uh, on certain sizes of the viewport. So what I can do is I press this pen here and it shows me basically how the image would look like on various uh, aspect ratios that we, of course, can customize based on what aspect ratios we're more in interested in. And the cool thing is I can tell the um, the browser what part of the image to focus on that should always be visible when you uh, when you crop it so I can do that by changing the uh, focal size here and moving it so here I'm telling it I want this part to always be visible if you ever crop this image and as you can see it changed here on the right so that's one very useful uh, feature but that's not the only one when it comes to media management, especially when it comes to images and videos. Uh, when you are on Sanity, there is a tab called Media that you can press on. And as you can imagine, when you work on a website that has lots of pages, um, not only that, but these pages could be translated uh, to various languages. So if you have like five languages, that's five times the number of pages and five times the images you add there. And uh, it's important to be able to filter through these images and organize them in a way to make it easy to upload them to any part of the website. And um, that's where the media um, tab is important. Uh, you can access it from media, but as you can see on the demo video, uh, you can also access it when you upload an image itself. Um, one cool part is that you can do a full search here um, you can change the way you look at the, the sizes if you prefer a list. You can filter by various fields. So I can filter by, I don't know, let's say um, file name. And I want all file names that include um, hero in them. Okay, so I don't have any with hero. Maybe that include an OG image. As you can see, all these file names have OG. So that's one way to add filters. You can add more than one. So you can also add a very useful filter called in use so that it only shows you images that are currently used on pages that are published. Um, I can clear the filters here. And um, one cool thing is that you can select any image you want and you can add a tag to it or multiple tags. So I can say this also belongs to products, let's say. And now when I save, I can see the tag here, but I can also see this tag here that I created uh, before, and I can filter only images that belong to that tag. So because this one, we added it to the products tag, it's, it's shown here, but more than that, you can see just products here, for example. That's a really, good way to filter out images to avoid noise when you're dealing with them. These tags can be added uh, custom, of course. So you can add a tag from here and name it whatever you want. Um, maybe we can call one um, uh, footer images. And then when you create images, now the tag is available and you can tag them with it.